Download the free Gun Dealio app to your smartphone. Find out about the latest deals and news on guns and gear. Includes the latest Gun Talk podcast and Gun Talk videos. That's Gun Dealio on the App Store and Google Play. Tom Gresham returns with more Gun Talk from the IWA Outdoor Classic Show in Germany. All right, welcome back to Gun Talk, um, European edition, I guess you could say. I'm Tom Gresham. We're at the uh, IWA show, IWA show in Nuremberg, Germany. I'm looking around here. We are in the Ruger booth. Uh, we've got all sorts of booths around. It's kind of like SHOT Show, except that I don't know a lot of these companies because there's a lot of companies here that really don't show much at SHOT Show. One of the companies that you may know about, and if you don't, you certainly should know about, is Umarex and Umarex USA. Richard Turner's the president, just joined us here. Richard, thanks for being here, man. Hey, absolutely. I'm glad to be here with you. Well, you guys make some of the coolest things because I go into your booth and I'm going, is that an MP5? <laughs> so, what, what, what is that? Well, you, you have... It's not correct to call them replicas. You have air guns. You have air. You have air saw. We do. We do. You know, uh, and you work with companies like Ruger because you've got basically their. I, I, well, I need to quit talking. What do yeah, you? Yeah. So you explain it. So really, I, I'd say when you look at Umarex USA, particular for that for the North American market than, than we handle, we do a, a lot of different products. Everything from uh, traditional air rifles and pellet rifles both propelled uh, through spring or through uh, pre-charged gas, right. as well as we do the CO2-powered uh, action pistols, or what we call for practice and, and really a, an opportunity to, to, for a very low cost, get some practice, some trigger time in, right. a lot of fun range time, and, and a lot of times a lot of backyard shooting fun sure. to sort of hone those shooting skills in. and doesn't cost you a lot of money when you look at BBs and uh, CO2. And you're, I guess, do you license these? Because, I mean, you, you've got the Ruger products, you've got, you know, SIG products, you got other, I mean, you got all sorts of Absolutely. things. Absolutely. So uh, what we do is we partner with a lot of uh, famous firearm companies like Ruger to, to build a replica, an action replica of those firearms. Um, so the consumer can have that same shooting experience or uh, have that same aspiration and to I mean, own a and something. It, it feels like it. I mean, it, it fits the holster. That's how close they are. They're that's, that's what we really we strive to do is really create something that's a, that's in a very close uh, replica shooting that same shooting and you know we, we add different features some of our pistols than we do will have the full blowback action pistols and some some will not okay uh, you know and, and and really what we allow it uh some inexpensive ways to get into shooting sports you know mm-hmm. there are a lot of people out there who uh love the idea of, of practicing or, or starting to shoot pistols and and are looking for an easy both affordable and and realistic way to get into target shooting and uh we offer that uh, really low cost barrier to get in a lot of fun is definitely a low cost way to shoot on a regular basis well and depending on where you are you can shoot in your garage in your basement in your backyard uh basically you just need a good pellet or bb catching system yep. a, a trap or whatever yep. you're going to use uh and use good safety equipment, always wearing uh, eye protection. Yes, but you sir. don't need hearing protection. You don't. You don't. Now, you know, uh, the interesting thing is uh, the air guns have come such a long way. You know, now when, w- when we talk about air guns, I think for some people they have a different perception of what you see now. In it's, fact, it's, it's not a Red Rider. It's not. Uh, <laughs> you know, in fact, one of our biggest introductions at SHOT Show for Umarex USA is the new Hammer. It's a 50 caliber Precharged pneumatic, so we use a 4,500 psi tank and a 3,000 oh psi regular. Now, what that allows us to do, it's a patented system for us, but the hammer is actually a two shot bolt action repeater. But you actually can fire a 220 grain lead projectile about 1,050 feet per second with that. Okay, just for perspective, so people understand, that's a 220 grain projectile. A 45 ACP uses a 230 grain projectile. So think of it as about the same, yep. except that you're going another 30 percent faster yep. than a 45 ACP pistol. With that, you can hunt pretty much anything out to whatever the limited range. Ab- would be. Absolutely. In fact, but I, I would think 100, 100 yards. Anyway. Oh, easily. In fact, uh, we shot a uh, Gims buck. Mm-hmm. Uh, about two weeks ago at 84 yards, uh, complete pass-through shot, ran 24 yards uh, and, uh, and uh, found her right there. And then uh, same deal, we shot a buffalo. So 1,700-pound animal. Go- now, with that, we used a 350-grain bullet. Uh, Cape Buffalo? Uh, no, uh, American Bison. Oh, American, American Bison. Bison. Oh, okay, okay. Uh, and so 
we shot that uh, a few weeks ago uh, for a TV sh- segment. Wow. And so, really, what you're seeing, a lot of states are looking, a lot of states have an air gun season. For example, Alabama, state of Alabama, has an air gun deer season. State no of Missouri has kidding. an air gun deer season. And, you know, uh, the, with the performance of, of air guns, how they're doing, we're seeing more and more states uh, are looking at it. In fact, we get inquiries on a regular basis about ballistics and performance because you're going to see more and more states offer that. And uh, it's a great hunting experience out there with an air gun. Wow, that is amazing. And, of course, I'm thinking about, I'll go back to the, the handguns, for people that want to, if you're going to carry a gun and you don't get to shoot a lot, you need to be real familiar with your gear. Uh, you can do that with an air gun. One safety protocol is just to make sure, because they are so darn close, yeah. they feel like your gun, when you, you want to separate the two. So you've got your, your centerfire gun and your air gun, and don't mix the two so you could possibly make a bang when you didn't expect to. Absolutely. You know, it's, it's, it's an obvious thing, but it's, it bears saying it at the very least. Yes, and, and you know, as we, we look at it is one of the other segments we see is a lot of new concealed carry classes or a lot of first-time shooters. It's a great way to introduce someone. Uh, you oh. know, your first experience in shooting a handgun, right. you know, sometimes there's that preconceived notion this thing's going to kick, gonna, this thing's going to have a huge loud, bang. And, yeah. and, you know, just that fear alone sometimes creates uh, people do a different way of shooting. They don't go naturally. True. So an air gun is a great entry point. Uh, target acquisition, squeezing the trigger, everything you're going to go through right. because we don't have the noise. We don't have a big uh, You can recoil. concentrate on the shooting. Absolutely. You can concentrate on the front sight. You can tr- concentrate on the trigger press. You can do all the things you're supposed to be doing without the interference of recoil and noise. Absolutely, and and so uh, it's a great training tool. A lot of uh, first-time female shooters, we do a lot with, with with different organizations for that for training, uh, just because it's a, it's a it's a great realistic way to get into the sport. Amazing. So how does it work when? You know, how do you decide which you know which? For instance, like Ruger, which of their guns are you going to use? You no, know, what we look at is what's in the marketplace. Uh, what we think consumers would really want a replica of. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we're excited. We won't, won't talk about it now, but we'll have a big Ruger launch at the tail end of 2018 that we're excited about. Okay. Um, you know, and, and so what we do is we try to look, okay, what products make sense uh, than, than fit, than someone would want a replica of right. in some instances, or they would want a brand, a brand in this product category with that. Uh, and so we look at it and uh, – the other side is we need to make sure that we can fit our internals into that that. That's that true. Frame. You don't want to create an entirely new mechanism. Exactly. You have a mechanism that you can put inside of the housing that becomes a Beretta 92 or a Smith or, a, or whatever it yeah. happens to be. Yeah. But inside, it's your workings. Absolutely. Yeah. So sometimes that might limit you a little bit on really the really concealed carry, the real small pistols, ah, sure. like an LCP or something like that. Okay. Because, you know, we've still got to put a CO, 12-gram CO2 in there, a valving system. Which is as big as the LCP magazine. is. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and so uh, that's always one caveat we have. Okay, okay, let's make sure we work with them because – Tried and true, we want to have that outside shell be as realistic uh, and sc- as to scale as the real product is sure. out there. And so, you know, we, we, we look at that at every year from product development. We, we have different ideas we want to do. We get together and think, okay, what would make the most sense? We might call our licensing partners uh, like a Ruger and say, hey, what are you thinking about this idea? We'd like to do it. What do you think your customers okay. would think about that? And then um, we, we sort of decide uh, – as a group, and then uh, move forward in, in development. And uh, Umarex, uh, the air guns that can be purchased, do you sell direct or you sell uh, through uh, re- ma- retailers? Mainly you'll, you're going to find through traditional uh, retailers, uh, both sporting good, uh, sporting retailers, specialty shops, independent dealers. So a wide wide amount of distribution out there. You can find our products out there. Of course, you can always visit our website, umarexusa.com, and get a real good look at the whole breadth of the product category and, and things we do out there. That is perfect. Richard, you guys do some interesting things, and I, I love going through your booth because it's, kind of like, it's like a whole collection of all these cool <laughs> guns. You go, wow, they're air guns. I, I can afford to shoot them. I can shoot them Absolutely. anywhere, and they're just fun. Thank you so much. I really appreciate this. No, thanks for having me. Uh, it's also a good time to see you here at uh, EWA again. Absolutely. Take care. Thanks. What's important in a gun safe? Security, reliability, safety, good looks? It all comes down to quality quality that's built in from the beginning. Liberty Safe has made quality products for 29 years right here in the USA. Trust your guns, your valuables, and your safety to Liberty Safe. Did you ever regret buying quality? 
I didn't think so. Get the best. Whatever your budget, get a Liberty Safe. LibertySafe.com. This land, once wild and free, fades now from our memory. But I remember what it was like, what we were like, what we are capable of when we band together. Perhaps more than any other landscape, wetlands embody the life-giving abundance that nature has to offer. And perhaps more than any other organization, Ducks Unlimited is working to ensure that our continent's wetlands not only survive, but thrive for generations well beyond this one. These natural wonders are where waterfowl begin their cycle of life, where the deer and the antelope play, and where we, the people, gather together to see and share what makes the outdoors so great. The time is now to band together with organizations like Ducks Unlimited. The time is now to rescue our wetlands. In the war on terror, fighting crime in the streets, in competition and homes around the world, one name in firearms stands out, Sig Sauer. Our pistols and rifles are renowned for their unfailing performance. This same commitment to excellence can be found in our line of SIGTAC accessories and the training offered by the Sig Sauer Academy. For unmatched quality, reliability, and innovation when it counts, choose Sig Sauer. Visit SigSauer.com today. All right, one of the great things about being at the EWA show is uh, seeing new things, different things, but also you see companies that you know, and then a company. Occasionally, you run into companies who say, well, I know those guys. I know what they make. And then you start talking to them. You go, oh, I don't really know what they make anymore. I knew what they made before. And that's certainly the case right now. We're talking with Steve Upham from Crossman Corporation, a good American U.S. company, right? Yes, yes, we are. All right. You're located in New York State. Yeah, we're uh, just outside of Rochester, New York. So we're an upstate company. Uh, we've we've been in business for 95 years. So started the company right there locally in 1923. 95 years. 95 Holy years. Holy cow! All right. So uh, how did the company get started? What's the, the the short story about how we got going here? Well, actually, it was it was a company that was started by uh, two brothers uh, from the Crossman Seed Factory, and uh, the seeds and the air guns had nothing to do with each other. Uh, the Crossman Seed Company is actually still in business today. You really? can buy uh, uh, specialty seeds for gardening. Okay. Uh, but uh, throughout uh, the early days, someone had the idea of uh, inventing an air gun. Um, and at that time, uh, they came out with their first model. And since then, uh, the company's been all about uh, developing new ways to project in, uh, uh, a piece of ammo downrange by air. All right. got to ask you, because I mean, you get both ways. Is it Crossman or Crossman? So you'll get it. You'll get it pronounced both ways. It, it is Crossman. Crossman. Um, uh, there are actually some large customers of ours that still send POs over with two S's, okay. which is kind of funny. Sure. Uh, uh, but that's probably the biggest. Uh, okay, Crossman. Okay. So give me an idea for those who say, yeah, you know, I, I know Crossman. You know, I had their BB guns when I was a kid thirty years ago or something. Uh, air guns today are not your granddaddy's air guns, are they? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. Matter of fact, <clears throat> what most people don't realize is Lewis and Clark actually traveled to the West with a air gun. Yes. And they did that uh, because of a couple of different reasons. One, they didn't have to rely on keeping their powder dry. Uh, and it also made uh, good silent ethical kills on game without scaring or giving their location away to some of the natives. So it, it was a tactical advantage, if you will, way back then. But also it was practical, which kind of brings up the point, because a lot of people think of air guns as, you know, uh, uh, the Daisy Red Rider. Yes. Uh, that era. Go, no, no. It is that. Yes, it encompasses that. But air guns encompass such a wide spectrum of firearms from fairly inexpensive uh, guns for youngsters to fairly advanced uh, adult air guns these days. And I kind of see, from my standpoint, I see that as being a, a, a much bigger area than it ever has been in the past. It, it is the single largest growth area in the air gun business uh, over the last 15 years. We call it the adult hunting business uh, ah. from the air gun side. Uh, and I'll, I'll just quickly explain. We look at the business really in four different ways. You've got you've got pistols, which are CO2 or air-powered pistols, a lot of replica-looking uh, right. items, right. very good performing. You've got the youth business, <clears throat> which would be the Daisy Red Rider or the, or the Crossman 760, right. uh, which are great training tools or a first-time uh, opportunity for youngsters to, to, to shoot a gun. Uh, and then you've got high-end uh, air competition, uh, like Olympic-style air competition. Yeah, people, a lot of people don't know that they shoot air guns in the Olympics, and those are some of the most 
accurate guns ever made. Yeah. So, the, the, you know, those three areas are, are all good, but the, the single largest growth area and really the most fun to shoot are what we call adult air guns. And this is, uh, these are these are guns that really are, are, are projecting the same way that a low-end air gun would with the force of air, but at a very high rate of speed, extremely accurate, and uh, able to take down game. Okay, so... The power source is still air, but we're not pumping it up by hand anymore. We're using the uh, essentially a scuba tank in many cases, are we not? Y- yes. So CO2 is another way to, to project an item uh, sure. through an air gun, but it has a very limited amount of uh, pressure. So you're okay. limited there to about 700 feet per second. Okay. Uh, the high-pressured air guns are still pumping air, to your point, but you're doing it one of two ways. You're either using a scuba tank or some sort of fill station. Right. Or... The um, uh, 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 brake barrel guns, as we call them, which are a single cocking gun, have a, a, a piston inside of them, which in, 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 in the same fashion are storing the air and then shooting a single shot downrange. And those right. are the ones that are the most popular, mm. uh, the biggest growth area, and, and, and very, um, uh, very popular with folks that want a small game hunt. All right. Give me an idea of, you know, within your line, what can you hunt with? What, what you know, what are we talking about as far as a gun, a load, a size of a, a projectile? So, so in that adult category, you're really talking about 177 caliber, 22 caliber, or 25 caliber. Those are great for small game hunting or for, for rodent control, uh, even even fox and coyote. Okay. Um, but the other the other big the other area that we've been able to um, uh, start to grow are are ones that can shoot big game. We shoot. Uh, right. We we pr- mass produce the uh, uh, the Benjamin Bulldog. Benjamin's also a brand of ours that we oh, own. Okay. And the Benjamin Bulldog shoots a three fifty seven caliber bullet. Actually, Nosler makes the bullet for us. So it's a three fifty seven handgun bullet. Absolutely, it okay. is the front end of a of a of a real firearms bullet, but projected by air. And you can kill deer and bear and uh, other large game animals with that. Holy cow. What kind of velocity are we talking about? So that you can get up to about 900 feet per second, which has got the same energy as, say, a thirty eight Special coming out of the barrel. Right. Oh, yeah. Which, you know, depending on what – it always depends on what the shooter can do. Yes. You know, that's a factor of it. But I would think that's probably a 50 to 100-yard – uh, effective range? Absolutely. It would, matter of fact, we, we sent a guy over to Africa and uh, when we first introduced this gun. He shot seven big game animals, including a, a wildebeest. Uh, seven shots, seven kills. And uh, in some of the shots were as far as 72 yards. Um, we've, we've shot in prairie dogs with it up to 120. So oh. a lot of fun. Oh, man. Uh, but uh, that, is a, that is a really uh, effective tool. And, and you can now big game hunt shooting deer and bear in the U.S. in eight states. No kid. Legally with that gun. Now, is that what we call the, the PCP, the pre-charge pneumatic? Yes, it is. Okay, so is it literally a scuba tank? or I mean, how do you fill that? There's, there's, there's two ways. You, you, you have to either take a scuba tank to a shop where they can fill it with air, and right. then you run that in, and you get multiple fills from that tank. Okay. Then you get multiple shots from each fill. Right. The other way is to, um, to invest in a high-pressure air pump, which is really a bicycle pump on steroids. Holy cow. Uh, but, you're, but you're pumping that gun multiple times to get the amount of pressure in there to what then project. What kind of PSI are we talking here? We're talking 3,000 <laughs> PSI. And to, to, to put that That's in, more in, than your bicycle tire. <laughs> in comparison, a basketball is 7 PSI, yeah. okay? Uh, this is 3,000. Holy smokes. And we actually have hand-operated pumps that will do that for yes, you. Yes, and it's a special pump. It has to be really tuned inside to be able to take that pressure. But it sure. pumps actually on the way up and the way down. And it has a cooling system in there with a, with a little uh, way yeah, for it to cool. you're compressing air greatly, and that's going to heat everything up. Tremendous amount of uh, heat. Right. I mean, I've, I've filled a number of uh, scuba tanks and oxygen tanks, and if you fill them too fast, they'll really heat up. So yes. that's, that's quite the issue. But those are the two ways. If, if you're going to get into the sport and you want to enjoy it with a lot of shooting, you invest in a larger tank. Uh, you can help fill your friends uh, at the same time. Right. And that's the single best way to do it. But the more economical way is to invest in the pump. Okay. All right. So are there? I know in the old days when we had spring-powered air guns, one of the issues that we ran into was it would tear up scopes because there was a weird motion in there, and it was like you're battering them both ways. So you'd have a scope that could handle a, a four or five eight magnum that an air gun would tear up. Uh, with these precharged pneumatics, these basically you're hunting air guns, do we have an issue here? It's not as big as in those brake barrel guns. The brake barrel guns, either with a spring or a piston, right. to your point. 
the piston's going one way, the air is going the other. So if the lenses are not glued on both sides, you can destroy a scope. Yeah. Uh, with the PCP guns, it's not as great uh, because the pressure is, is going in one direction. But you still want a good quality scope because you're shooting at ranges now out in that 30, 50 uh, mm-hmm. yard range. Uh, and then you want to also be able to uh, to adjust your parallax because the, uh, the, the, the drop compensations are different than a firearm. Ah, good point. You, uh, you definitely have different drop because, I mean, if you're shooting out to 100 yards, you could have, I don't know what the drop would be, but it would be a number of inches, not at all like a centerfire. So you're having to take care of that as well. Yeah, I mean, in the first 10 yards, you're shooting 4 inches high, and then you're, you're on at 50, and you're 4 inches low at 100. Okay. That's just a, a good comparison. So having a, a good quality scope with the, with, with the proper ability uh, um, to adjust the parallax is critical. So what are you finding in the marketplace out there when you start explaining this and you say, we're shooting a 357 Magnum bullet, if you will, at 900 feet per second. You've got to be getting some interesting reactions from people. Well, the first thing they want to do is they want to know where they can hunt with it. Um, uh-huh. Because, you know, they're, they're, there's certainly the, the thrill of taking game. Uh, and, and, and then being able to feed your family the, the, sure. the meat. But there's also a challenge to take game with different uh, 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 weapons. Sure, you guys, try something different. Yeah, guys want to shoot with a bow. They want to shoot with a crossbow. They right. want to shoot from a helicopter or whatever the whatever thing might it is, be. Yeah. Uh, so there, there's that intriguing part about uh, folks that want to take uh, animals with um, an air rifle. And there's that challenge to now go out and buy uh, uh, um, a gun that they can go take a deer with for the first time or be the first person maybe their town or their state that's done that. So um, that's that's kind of the, the, the fun. When you start talking to people, they get really intrigued by that. Oh, I bet. They get excited about it. I want, I want to do this. I want, and then you think, and the other thing is people say, well, it's going to be silent. Actually, it's not silent. When you got that much gas <clears> blowing <throat> out the barrel, you, you can make a pretty good noise with it. It, it is, um, but the, the, the lack of recoil is the funnest part. I mean, oh, yeah? the, you can see a pellet hit a squirrel through the scope. Oh, it's almost okay. like watching it on TV. So it, when you're shooting, uh, you can actually see if you made a, a, a good ethical shot. Sure. Because the lack of recoil, um, you can see down your scope. Right. And a great way to get people into shooting where you don't have the recoil, you don't have the noise. You don't also have the uh, the gases uh, that you have to worry about if you were going to shoot in a new range. Ah. And a lot of times that first-time shooter doesn't want to be spooked or scared. And, and they, sh- they shoot an air gun, and then they see the target explode, a can fall over, yep. and they just get a great big smile on their face. Instant gratification. Steve Upland, thank you so much. Much. For more information, Crossman, it's C-R-O-S, one S, C-R-O-S-M-A-N dot com, right? Thank you very much. I Thank appreciate you. it. Have a great show. All right, you too. All right, be right back with more Gun Talk. Welcome back to Gun Talk. Tom Gresham here. Yep, yep, yep. we're still in Germany. Couldn't leave. We're having a bunch of fun around here, meeting with some old friends. It's interesting how many uh, people you see at the SHOT Show who are also here. It's also interesting when you go into a local restaurant or a, 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 not a brew house. Rick, help me out. Do, our, our, uh, beer garden. Beer garden. That's right. <laughs> Rick Patterson joins us right now from Sammy, the Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute, Beer Garden. And you're sitting there in the beer garden, and you hear somebody behind you saying, yeah, you know, well, I really like the 55-grain bullet. And you're going, what? He says, you got to be here for Igor, right? <laughs> says, yes, you're not German, although there are a lot of Germans who like to shoot, clearly. Absolutely. So, all right, first of all, let's do this. Um, tell people what Sammy is and what it's about. Sure. Thanks, Tom. And it's a pleasure to be here. I always enjoy uh, always being fun. on the show. Yeah. Uh, Sammy, the Sporting Arms and Ammunition Manufacturers Institute, was created in 1926 at the request of the government to create standards for safety, reliability, and interchangeability of firearms, ammunition, and components. So basically, we set the standard. We are an accredited ANSI standards developer. Okay. Uh, we set the standards that... Uh, the manufacturers follow for design, manufacture, transportation, storage of, of the firearms, ammunition, okay. and components. So from the com- consumer side, what that means is if I buy a 30 6 cartridge from Remington or, and from Winchester or from any other manufacturer, it will work in a rifle chamber for that from any other manufacturer if they're all following the SAMI specs. That is absolutely correct. All right. So... We have this set of measurements, and for those who haven't looked, it's a lot of measurements. I mean, it's just like 
every angle, every diameter, everything. And then we, and that's not even talking about the internals, the ballistics, Mm -hmm. the pressures and all of that, right? Right. And it's not just the standards for the pressures. uh, It's the standards for the test equipment, how to operate the test equipment, uh, you know, right down to the degree of of, uh, uh, complexity, right down to what we affectionately known as uh, the SAMI twirl, which is how you rotate the cartridge, inserting it into the test barrel. So you get that ultimate consistency. Um, And we also have a uh, reference ammunition program where uh, essentially you've got a very limited run, but very tight tolerance uh, uh, ammunition that gets sent out to all of the test stations, all of the manufacturers. Uh, They run it through their system. There's a whole bunch of mathematical computations, etc. Let et me explain for people, when you say the Sammy twirl, if you are a real serious handler, you might get this. But the way a powder is oriented in a case affects the pressure levels and the burn rate because you're exposing a different amount of powder to the initial blast, if you will, of the primer. So that if you start it with all the powder down against the primer, you're going to get a different burn rate than if all the powder is laid out horizontally in, say, a rifle cartridge. So you have this consistency, so you get the same thing every time. Exactly. Know, and that's the kind of esoteric stuff that you guys work with that we don't know about it, but we benefit from it. Well, absolutely. And we take care of it, so you don't have to worry well, about it. We appreciate it. that. Well, the other thing you take care of is dealing with agencies. Because mm-hmm. uh, you work very closely with ATF. And you know, a lot of people say, oh, boo, ATF. No, no. In this case, the ATF, you're working hand-in-hand hand with them to make sure that everything is working the way it's supposed to. Absolutely. Is that fair? That, that, yes, that's very fair. Uh, you know, we do a lot of work with, with many, many different agencies. Uh, pretty much name the agency we work with yeah. them in some capacity. Okay. Uh, you know, federal procurement for uh, law enforcement, for oh. instance. They require SAMI uh, manufactured ammunition right. and, and firearms. So, uh, yeah, we work with every regulatory agency up to and including the U.N. Uh, well, we're going to talk about that in the next <laughs> segment with the U.N. and WFSA and all of that because that's a whole different world. Yes, and it I, is. I, I applaud you for what you're doing there. We'll talk about that. One of the things that occurs to me that we wouldn't be able to have safe hand loading if there weren't SAMI specs on pressure levels. Correct. Because you say, okay, 30 out 6 is whatever the number is, 47,000 PSI. Just pick a number. Uh, then all the load data that people put out, whether it's Hodgson or Lyman or whomever, their loads go up to but won't exceed the pressure level that you've established, correct? That's correct. But that's also where the hand loader has to be very, very careful to follow those recipes. Absolutely. You know, you don't you go s- freelancing out here. Not at all. You switch a primer, and that's going to have – you were talking about the burn rates. Right. And, and the, the brisons of a primer, yes. The, the gunpowder is a very, very fascinating – double-based gunpowder is a very, very fascinating chemical. And the uh, the little things that can significantly change the pressure levels, mm-hmm. uh, it can spike very, very, very quickly. Right. Yes. So a little bit of a different burn on the primer can significantly affect right. the pressure so you levels. Don't from the say, well, it fits. No, if it says it's a CCI uh, primer. That's what you use. Absolutely. If you, if you don't have it, you say, but I have a Remington primer. Okay, then go find a load. A, pub, a published load right. that uses what you have. But don't go freelancing because uh, the surprise is usually it's not a big deal. But when it's a big deal, it becomes a really, really ugly surprise. It's a, it's a huge deal. Yeah, it really is. And, I mean, that's what you guys do. And you're kind of one of those things that people, I'm sure people go, what is that again? What do you do? And you go, well, this is what we do. And we've only scratched the surface of it. I know you're, you guys are into all sorts of things. It's, uh, but if we didn't have a Sammy, it would have to be invented. You, you couldn't do what we do in firearms and ammunition without having standards set up. That's exactly right. And, and it's on all levels. You know, uh, the design uh, manufacturer is one side. You, know, you also have the uh, transportation and storage uh-huh. and making sure that, that the products are transported safely and responsibly without going too far, without regulations that go too far right. and make it too expensive. Right, to ship them and transport them. Exactly. All right. Tell you what, hold on a second. Uh, I want to come back. We're going to talk about something else. One of the reasons I love coming to EWA, but also uh, one of the reasons I came over is because we were invited by the WFSA. It's the World Forum for Shooting Activities. 
And uh, we'll get Rick to tell you a little bit about that and what we did yesterday. It was pretty interesting and uh, personally a lot of fun. We're at the Iwa Show in Nuremberg, Germany. I'm Tom Gresham, and this is Gun Talk. When you think of Europe, think of guns, because they sure do. Laser sights enhance shooting fundamentals, sight alignment, and trigger control. Training with laser sights increases muzzle awareness, improves and corrects sight alignment at sight picture, and aids in acquiring and maintaining sight picture in low light conditions. Call 800-442-2406 or visit crimsontrace.com for a free copy of our laser training video, The Laser's Edge, and learn why Crimson Trace is making laser sights standard equipment. You got your carry permit, and that's good. But you know you could use more training. Get the DVDs, which have what you need. Springfield Armory presents Concealed Carry 1 and Concealed Carry 2 with Bata Group. Learn specific concealed carry skills from Top Gun fighting trainers. Get trained. Be prepared. This really is life and death. ShopGunTalk.com that's ShopGunTalk.com. Hi, this is Tom Gresham from Gun Talk. America is losing critical wildlife habitat at a rate of one football field every hour. It's happening on the Louisiana coast, but it's critical to all sportsmen and conservationists. These precious wetlands provide winter habitat for more than 10 million ducks and geese annually. Waterfowl that migrate north through dozens of states. Don't shrug it off. Get involved. You can help. Visit vanishingparadise.org. Whether you are a first-timer or seasoned shooter, Double Star has the guns, edged weapons, and parts you desire. Our products are made in America and held to the highest quality standards. No exceptions. Double Star and Ace Limited manufactures products people bet their lives on without hesitation. That awesome responsibility motivates the Double Star family, and it will proudly protect yours. When you're ready for the best, join our family at star15.com. That's star15.com. All right, back with Tom Gresham, Gun Talk. We're sitting here with uh, Rick Patterson from SAMI. And now we can talk about the WFSA, World Forum for Shooting Activities. And probably easier for to get people's attention to say, everybody is aware of the efforts at and through the UN to restrict or regulate firearms and ammunition. World Forum is the group that represents shooters, one of the groups, but the primary group, as far as I'm concerned, represents shooters and badly outnumbered, I might add. I found out yesterday. And when I'm, I'm sitting here yesterday and listening to you talk, I'm thinking, oh, my God, I'm so glad you do that because it would drive me crazy to deal with the process because process is everything when you go to the U.N., isn't it? It is, definitely. And, you know, the WFSA was created because you look at the different countries, the different regions, and we're all dealing with the same issues. Right. But we're all in different points on the curve with those issues. And, you know, what one uh, organization has done successfully on this issue over here is the problem that another organization is facing in a different country over here and vice versa. And, And the idea was to get these national associations together so they can share information on what's working what are they facing so we can work together and not reinvent italian manufacturers and shooters you have the germans and all Mm -hmm. and you're all talking now so when you go to the un you're speaking with one voice exactly exactly and just sharing the information uh, to, to help us better succeed let's not spend time reinventing wheels let's let's spend the time building a better future right so One of the things you did is you invited me over here to speak to the World Forum yesterday. Well, it was a little bit more than that, Tom. You're being kind of humble. But uh, we were also incredibly uh, pleased and honored to uh, give you the Dr. Vito Jenko Ambassador Award. And very, very much deserved for everything that you've done to really promote and support the shooting sports uh, on such such a great scale and, you know, well, it meant a lot to me coming from this group. You might just tell them about uh, the award and the man it's named after. Well, Dr. Vito Jenko is uh, one of the, the founders of the World Forum, certainly a pillar. He was uh, the head of uh, AFIMS, which is the European Ammunition Manufacturers uh, 
brilliant man. Uh, very, very knowledgeable, incredibly passionate uh, about what he did. And yet he was the consummate gentleman. He was uh -huh. just a great guy. Okay. So, you know, I, I have to ask, what, what's the award about? What is, what is it supposed to signify? Well, the award is... is Kind of as it sounds, it's for somebody who has been an outstanding ambassador for everything that we stand for. And, uh, you know, all the work that you've done in, uh, uh, with your, your books, the radio show, the TV show, the, the social media, and just expanding into those, those new opportunities to get the good word out. You know, we have such a great story to tell, uh, the, the bright light of truth uh, on issues that... It's a the great disinfectant, isn't it? It's you shine exactly. the light of truth on it. <laughs> well, and when I did the keynote speech, I was trying to explain a little bit about how the U.S. shooting experience is unique. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and not to say, look, it's you know, it's better than what you have in other countries, but to say you can't really understand the passion that the Americans have for the Second Amendment, for gun rights, until you understand how we got to where we are. Exactly. And so exactly. I was trying to kind of run through that, and I fully appreciate that for some of them, they're going, wow, that's kind of different. You guys are really into the self-defense thing. And I go, yeah, but, you know, if you don't understand that, you don't really understand where we are. But, but, but that's really kind of the key to everything that I've seen in, oh, my gosh, way too many years at the U.N. and, right. and in the international arena of what this is really about, what gun control is really about. It's not about guns. It is about who do you have your faith in? Who, do you have your faith in institutions or individuals? Hmm. It is statism versus democracy. And wow. that's the general philosophy. Right. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of countries in the world that have very, very strong government regimes and controls and and that's what they want they have their faith in their institutions we as americans have our faith in individuals we trust people you know and people say well are you anti-government say well no, i'm not anti-government i just understand what works and what doesn't and they're not going to be there when my wife is being attacked i mean and it really is as elemental and as simple as that isn't it it really is. And, but, of course, you know, the shooting sports is, is a broad, broad scope of, of, of issues. There's something for everybody in the shooting well, sports. And I want to touch on something. While I'm listening to you talk yesterday in one of these sessions, I'm going, oh, my God, the things you're dealing with. It's like uh, the gentleman from ATF is saying, well, there's a group in the U.N. that they would like to specify things like the depth of the engraving of serial numbers. And he said, we already have that established here. If they change that in the UN, which becomes a treaty, which becomes binding on us, now we're into this whole other mess. And, I, and while he's talking and you're talking about this, I'm thinking, you guys are dealing with things that are very small, minutia, but they have the potential for really screwing up the works. They do. And really, it's, it's every word on every piece of paper makes a difference. Right. And, you know, the, at one point, you know, the the price of liberty was eternal vigilance, and, and now it's the eternal reading of, of draft these, regulatory oh documents. Better you than me, my friend, because I'm listening to all this. I'm thinking, I, first of all, I don't know how you stay awake through it, you know, and, but you're right. You have to watch every single word, and if they can change one word, and it, it screws it up. So thank you for what you're doing. Uh, WFSA is the group. And, you know, I don't know if there's a way that individuals can get involved and help with this or if they just kind of stay attuned and, and pay attention to what's going on. Well, stay attuned, pay attention. We're in the middle of uh, creating a new website that will be a resource. Uh, okay. You'll find studies, you know, uh, information. We've done a number of workshops and symposia on issues like, you know, lead management, shooting range management, uh, hunting, the economic and ecologic benefits of hunting. Okay. So people have the tools to, to shine that light brightly. Very good. Rick, thank you so much. Rick Patterson, president of SAMI and uh, WFSA. Man, I just can't thank you enough for what you guys are doing. Well, Tom, thank you, and congratulations on your award. It was definitely well-deserved, and, and congratulations again. Thank you so much.
Gresham returns with more gun talk from the IWA Outdoor Classic Show in Germany right now. All right, we're back with Tom Gresham here. Yep, it's the IWA Show. We're going to be wrapping this thing up. Had a lot of fun. A lot of folks walking by who I know. A lot of people I don't know. <laughs> a lot of people I don't know what they're saying. <laughs> uh, one of the things that I get when I come over here is uh, I think, man, why don't we know more languages? And I, I get it. Look, if you're in Europe and you have other countries all around you, you, know, you need to learn to speak those. What are we going to do? Well, we could learn to speak Alabama. That's almost another language, <laughs> with apologies to my friends in Alabama. Uh, but it is a hoot. I do want to say uh, another big thank you to the folks at the World Forum for Shooting Activities. they uh given me that great award. It's, a, it's essentially a Lifetime Achievement Award. It's I don't know what people are trying to tell me. NSSF just gave me a Lifetime Achievement Award at SHOT Show, and then this one, and I got the 2017 Gun Rights Defender of the Year. Are they trying to tell me it's time for me to go? Or maybe they know something I don't know about uh, am I going to be hanging around. I, don't, I hope not, because I plan to do this for an awful long time. Uh, wonderful experience over here. One of the things, my takeaways in talking to people, I had a conversation with a fellow from England yesterday, and it was interesting. He said, basically, he was saying, well, you know, of course, gun control is bad, but what we have in England is okay. I'm going, what? And he said, well, yeah, nobody actually needs those kinds of guns that you have, and I don't really know that I would want one of those. And it was interesting to me because each person, they bring their own perspective to this. And one of the takeaways for all of this is that we are clearly in the U.S. under attack right now, organized, orchestrated, and very well-funded. We have this national march against gun violence that's being heavily orchestrated. By the way, I uh, joined uh, Every Town for Gun Safety, Mothers Against, Mothers Demand. That way I get all their emails. I find out when and where they're going to be having their marches. You should, too. You should join, sign up for their newsletters to find out what's going on. You may want to show up. That's some of their marches. <laughs> Maybe we're an NRA hat. That'd be kind of fun. But more important and actually more useful is this. Get involved in your state organization and find out. But look, here's the thing. The same gun ban law is being introduced in all states. It is being handed to a legislator in your state, in my state, in every state. It's written by the Bloomberg folks. And they have all the support material behind it, and they will bring people in to speak at the Capitol when they hear it and do the hearings on the bill. It's the same bill being introduced everywhere, heavily orchestrated, highly financed. And what does that mean for you? It means you've got to show up. Not only do you have to call, yeah, clearly you've got to call, you've got to talk to your legislators, you have to send emails, you have to make comments online on news stories. But the other thing is literally... Showing up, being there, taking the day off work to go to the legislature when they're hearing this so you can speak. And maybe you get two minutes, maybe you get five minutes uh, to speak on the issue. But when we show up with one or two of us and the other side has 20 or 40, then that gives one impression. But when we show up with 100 of us, that gives a different impression. And the legislators understand that. How do you know when it's happening? Well, that's real simple. You get involved in your state Gun rights organization. Uh, some states have more than one. Join all of them. I don't care. But just make sure that you are somehow informed so you know what's going on, when it's going on. Because make no mistake, we are under absolute, full-blown assault. And they want nothing less than to take away all your guns. They'll settle for a little bit at a time. But their goal is to get them all. And they'll actually say that occasionally. Say, our, our goal is zero guns, of course. But we know we can't get there right now. We are. Uh, Here's the thing. If we give up a little bit, we never get it back. You give up a little bit, you never get it back. No one ever won a game with a prevent defense, okay? You can't be playing defense and win. What we have to do is be working to take back rights, gain rights, push, push, push. That way we're not losing. Simple as that. It's your time. It's our time. There's no time like this. We've got to be there. I expect you to do it. I hope you'll do it. I'm going to be there. It's what we all have to do. Take care. Thanks for listening. 